G'day folks, Sapper here with another World of Warships video. Welcome to In-Depth, the series with theory crafting and analysis where we see how deep rabbit holes can get. Well we've got it, finally a mid-tier ranked season. The next ranked season starts on the 20th of May and is at tier 7. So we always hear what the top tier picks are for a ranked season, but what if you don't have the top tier picks, or what if you don't like playing them? In this video I'm going to go through every tier 7, where it sits and give you a quick overview of why I've placed it there. That's right, this is in-depth on tier 7 ranked. I'm doing this so if you are umming and ahhing about what ship to play, you have an idea of where that ship sits in relation to others and why. The top picks will be mentioned but not covered in depth as there are enough videos on them. Quickly a caveat. This tiering assessment is not for random battles, co-op or scenarios. This is for ranked, and in particular the season starting on the 20th of May 2020. This is my assessment, and I have biases as we all do. I will explain why each ship is where it is, but that does not make this list infallible. The list is my opinion. Having said that, I've bumped heads with a few folks from the Brains Trust to refine this list a little bit, and to try and take as much of my bias out of it as possible. But there are one or two picks that I didn't budge on. Don't worry, I'll let you know which ones, and explain why. The ranking system I'll be using is a tiering system. This system takes the ship into account as a whole. Please note that any ship in the right conditions can win. Just because a ship is rated in the lower end of the spectrum doesn't mean she's not worth picking. It is merely my assessment of her for ranked. Remember, skill trumps ship, and playing a ship that you are comfortable in is always better than picking something that's meta. This ranking does not take into account how easy a ship is to play, so always go for comfort first. So, to the different tiers. S tier or special at tier. S tier ships are the strongest at tier and class for ranked. A tier or always good picks. A tier ships are strong picks no matter the situation. They are really only outdone by S tier in their capability in class. B tier or best of the rest. B tier are solid picks that can do well most of the time, but may not be quite as good as A tier and will be outclassed by S tier in most situations. C tier, consider picking. C tier ships are either a specialist in an area that is not great for ranked, or are outclassed in their role by other ships. D tier, don't consider. D tier ships for whatever reason simply aren't worth picking because of a glaring weakness or they are simply outmatched by everything in class or role. As for what I look for in each of the ships, it primarily comes down to role and class. For battleships, Alpha Strike is king, so overmatch is a huge thing, and then things like DPM, speed, and tankiness. For example, Colorado hits hard and overmatches, but it doesn't have much speed and isn't overly tanky, so she drops down a bit. For cruisers, this is where there is the most flexibility, but I'm looking at things like utility, DPM, speed, and tankiness. Most cruisers fall into roles such as flanker or DPM, with things like radar carrying a heavy influence. For example, Fiji is an amazing ship with smoke and DPM, but she is outclassed by Belfast, who has radar and HE. For destroyers, the primary defining factors are concealment and ability to contest caps. Destroyers with good ability in both areas will rate highly. Gajamata, for example, is a good destroyer but is outclassed by Hader, who is a lot stealthier and has Hydro and Creeping Smoke. With that said, let's get to the juicy bits. S tier, or special at tier, strongest in class. Synop. This shouldn't be a surprise. Soviet battleships often do multiple things best in class at tier. Synop is no different. She has 406mm guns, good speed and excellent armour. Basically, she has it all. Belfast. Belfast has the smoke and radar combination at tier 7 and is the reason she isn't sold anymore. Add Hydro, HE Spam and good stealth, Belfast is very strong. Flint. DPM and smoke. This ship was the go-to easy mode for many players last time we saw tier 7 in ranked. She's strong. Atlanta. In ranked, which centers around caps, and maps often have a lot of island cover, Atlanta will DPM everything to the ground from safety and has radar to zone out caps. Hader. 
the stealthiest DD at tier 7 and one of the strongest gunboats with hydro and the added flexibility of creeping smoke. She's easily the strongest destroyer at tier 7 and a personal favourite of mine. Wargaming, Commonwealth Lines, when? If you want further information on these S tier ships, go find it. Let's get to the stuff that we're here for, all the others. A tier, or always good picks. Scharnhorst. Scharnhorst is A tier thanks to tankiness, gun reliability and 30 knot speed. She outdoes Geniser now thanks to gun reliability. While she only has 9 283mm guns, they turn quickly, are fast firing and have enough barrels to land some shells at range. Scharnhorst is an excellent cruiser killer and can out-tank or out-DPM most battleships at tier 7. Remember, if enemies get too close, she has some torpedoes and secondaries to back her up. Ashitaka. An old A-hull Amagi at tier 7. She doesn't have the torpedo bulge trollish tankiness that most IGN battleships have when upgraded, but don't let that fool you. She has a respectable health pool and the scary part, 10 410mm guns. Ashitaka doesn't care who you are, she has the guns to smash you. If the enemy is an angled synop, no problems. Ashitaka has great IGN HE as well, although you can still get reliable results with AP punching through her deck. Ashitaka is fast at 30 knots, punchy, and has an extended armor belt to the rear. She is exceptionally hard to chase down and kill. Nagato. You could argue Nagato is in A tier because of my bias, and you wouldn't be wrong. I love Nagato. But Nagato is here because she has 8 410mm guns, okay speed in tier, and can be trollishly tanky, even without considering her large health pool. She is respectable in all areas with no glaring weaknesses, and thanks to 410s, she is a good pick in all situations. She's not quite as punchy or quick as Ashitaka, topping out at 25 knots, but when angled can do some odd things to shells thanks to an interesting armour scheme around her citadel and belt sections. Don't underestimate Nagato's 8 guns, when they hit, they hit like a truck and are effective at all ranges. Fiji Fiji has DPM, smoke, hydro and a heal, all balanced by no armour. She excels at holding an area or zone, and remember that rank centres around cap control. For those times when you make a mistake with Fiji, you have a heal to top you up and go again. Fiji is like a tech tree flint with a few tweaks. There's not much more to say really, Fiji is a great ship. Fun fact, I actually prefer playing Fiji to Belfast. Go figure, but it's probably the heal, or maybe it's how dirty I feel when I play Belfast. Surrey. Some may not like Surrey, but she has a lot going for her in every area except tankiness, although she does have a heal which is useful. Her flexibility and generalist playstyle will allow her to adjust to situations and outplay opponents. For the full rundown on Surrey, I have a bluff review which I'll link down in the description and pin in the comments. Helena. Helena is a DPM machine and can be trollishly tanky at times thanks to her armor scheme. In ranked, which often centers around take and hold and terrain, Helena performs really well in the DPM slot, only really being outdone by Atlanta with her added radar. Don't underestimate Helena's AP, she has 15 shells and can easily get upwards of 6 citadels in a good salvo. The only thing she really lacks in her role is range with 14.6 kilometers. However, that does outclass Atlanta. Boise and Nueva de Julio. These two are basically the same ship. USN Boise and Pan Am Nueve are Helena's but with worse reload and range, but have access to a heal. Personally, I prefer them to Helena as the heal gives you that added sustain and the ability to come back into the fight. It's a bit of added flexibility. The main thing you need to know is that they only have 13.6km range. Jarvis. Jarvis is one of the best destroyers at tier, and the combination of good gunnery, OK torpedoes and hydro means that she is in a good position to be the best cap contester, if it wasn't for Hayter. Hayter's stealth and health advantages are really the only thing preventing Jarvis from being an S tier pick. Z39. I personally don't like 150mm destroyers, but Z39 is not a joke. Z39 is here because she has two standout things. Excellent health and 5km hydro. She also has good torpedoes, punchy guns and OK concealment. If it wasn't for Hayter's advantage in concealment, Z39 would be fighting Jarvis for the top destroyer at tier 7. 
The two things to watch out for is Z39's pretty average turret traverse and her excellent AP. Remember, her AP is to be feared. On to B tier, or best of the rest. Gneisenau. now. Gneiser now is fast and tanky. She has a blistering 32 knot speed and is one of the tankiest battleships at tier 7 with Scharnhorst and Sinop. Sadly, she only has 6 guns and there's nothing special about them apart from being punchy on a shell by shell basis, but again, only 6 guns. Like Scharnhorst, Gneiser now has situationally useful torpedoes and secondaries. If you can make her main guns work, Gneiser now is a strong battleship. Leon. Leon, quite simply, has 16 guns. 16 340mm guns in quadruple turrets. The turrets don't have the best firing angles, but 16 guns. 16. Leon has a very small health pool, so don't expect her to tank, but she rounds this out with respectable 27 knot speed. Leon is good at punishing cruisers and broadsides with AP, and everything else with HE, simply thanks to the number of guns. Just make sure you don't get focused. King George V. KGV almost made it to A tier. She was really only edged out by a lack of overmatch ability. KGV is stealthy and can get some great damage numbers. She has 10 guns that spew out flames like most of the other Royal Navy battleships, but at an impressive 25 second reload. Where she stands out at tier 7 is her stealth, which you can get down to around 12.7 kilometers. KGV is not as tanky as many other battleships at tier 7, eating pens at all sorts of angles thanks to her armor setup. However, she does have an improved heal and good belt armor to make up for it. Overall, if players can work with KGV stealth and HE, she can perform very well. Duke of York. Duke of York is a KGV, but with worse reload and access to hydro instead of the plane options. Considering how ineffective both ships are above their 18.1 km range, the plane thing isn't much of a factor. They both perform well, vomiting fires all over everyone, with KGV arguably being the better pick thanks to reload. Personally, I prefer the Duke because of the Hydro, but it depends if you want utility or the added DPM. Miyoko Sisters I have a bias towards Miyoko and her ARP and Dragon Sisters. I almost think that she should be an A-tier pick. I was, however, convinced otherwise thanks to the cap-focused nature of Ranked, so I stand by a B-tier rating. Miyoko excels on a flank where her very accurate 10 203mm guns can get to work. She has good concealment with 11.5km with full concealment and a beefy alpha strike with great HE and respectable AP. She is best when fighting a rearguard action on a flank where she can get maximum use out of her rear facing torpedoes and rear bias turrets. However, do not underestimate her in general. She can quickly gain the upper hand against many enemies by ambushing from concealment with the most accurate cruiser guns at tier 7. Algeri. Algeri is an excellent flanking or long range heavy cruiser. With a nice combination of speed boost, reload booster and 17.9km range on respectable HE and AP shells, she can perform well in a range of circumstances. She pushes down cruisers like Shores, Lazo and York thanks to this nice combination of traits making her arguably the strongest long range cruiser at tier 7. New Orleans New Orleans is a solid all round heavy cruiser. She can be remarkably tanky when angled, has good concealment, respectable HE and nice AP with improved pen angles. Combining this with a decent ability to shoot over islands, and New Orleans is a flexible heavy cruiser that should be respected if positioned and angled well. Gorizia. This is probably going to be an unpopular placing. Regia Mariner heavy cruisers are a controversial subject. Gorizia edges out Zara, but both have respectable guns, respectable armour, spotter aircraft, and the very useful fuel smoke. If I were to pick a dark horse for T7 ranked, it would be Garizia. The reason Garizia edges out Zara is because she has the insane tier 10 German Hydro, reaching 6 kilometers, and this Hydro combined with her SAP and fuel smoke has the ability to wreck destroyers and do some interesting power plays. While I rate Garizia at B tier, this is primarily because of the ability for big plays with fuel smoke and Hydro. Otherwise she would compete with Algeri for long range cruiser. Gajamata. Gajamata is a good destroyer, albeit without any of the advantages to edge her into S or A tiers, but she has respectable stealth at 6.1km and decent guns. 
Where she falls down is in the health and torpedo departments. Her health is middle of the pack for tier 7, and her torpedoes are deepwater variants, not being able to hit destroyers. Shiratsuyu. Shiratsuyu is a strong destroyer in most areas except for guns and health. She has an impressive 5.8km concealment, which is only beaten by Hader, but a really low health pull. Where she could gain some traction is her torpedoes. She has two quad launchers and the ability to take torpedo reload booster instead of smoke. Meaning that if she times it right, it doesn't matter if you can see the torpedoes coming, you were already dead. Shira makes it into B tier simply because of stealth. She is the only destroyer around that can rival Hader's 5.7km concealment. On to C tier, or consider playing. Poltava. I haven't played Poltava, so what I know about Poltava I've gleaned from CCs and those who have given me their thoughts. Poltava has good HE, but she can't land enough shells for her to be reliable. She has good speed at 30 knots and great concealment 12.2km. She works best stern to enemy, spewing AP or HE depending on the target. The best thing going for her is her speed, otherwise you are better off taking KGV for HE or Shan Horst for mobile battlecruiser play. Colorado. Colorado is a respectable gun platform, having the ability to overmatch everything at tier. Where she is let down is tankiness, the entire ship being overmatched, and speed at an abysmal 21 knots. Colorado can work. There are just better battleship options at tier 7, either with more guns, better speed, better armor, or all of the above. Nelson. Nelson is a great ship in many regards, sadly speed and armor are not her strengths. Her 406mm guns don't have normalized AP either, meaning she doesn't get the same overmatch results as ships like Nagato or Gneisenau at range. Nelson has a great heal and great HE, but is outclassed in flexibility by KGV and Duke of York by her average 24 knot speed and huge citadel size. Hood. Hood is a ship that wishes it was a tier 7 war spite, but doesn't quite get there. She's very quick at 32 knots, can be decently tanky at times, and has normalized AP on her guns. Sadly her guns just don't have the punch of other 381s or 406s at tier, and are trollishly unreliable at times. Her tankiness isn't quite there either, with armor sections throughout the ship being less than those of other battleships at tier, resulting in a ship that eats pens surprisingly often, and is set fire at the hint of a spark. Zara. Zara can be a solid long-range cruiser and even mid-range support, with decent speed, fuel smoke, spotter plane, and SAP. Sadly, in the long-range spot, Algeria is a far better option, and in the mid-range support there are many heavy cruiser options. Zara is a solid cruiser, but there are many contenders for the cruiser position. Shores. Shores is a decent long-range HE spammer with 16.8km range and spotter on top of that. Sadly, she's also very squishy and easily punished at any range. She has good concealment, DPM and range, but just doesn't compete with ships like New Orleans, Algeri, or even Zara and Garizia, thanks to squishiness. Lazo. Lazo is like a longer range shores, with less armor and more health. Again, she's outclassed by other cruisers in the long range or DPM roles, but she's still a pretty good cruiser. York. York is another tier 7 long range cruiser that's respectable, but a bit outclassed in some respects. York is primarily knocked down to C tier by Algeri, who is a better option thanks to speed and reload boosters. But if you want a respectable heavy cruiser, York is definitely a viable candidate. While she doesn't have the DPM that Shores or Lazo have, she is tankier and has good HE pen and the great German AP. Don't forget that ages ago she received shell buffs, so her shells have flat trajectories now, compared to her old floaty ones. Mahan. Mahan being C tier is a product of stealth creep more than anything. She has respectable torpedo options, decent guns, and an excellent smoke consumable. Her health is okay, but she is outspotted by almost every destroyer at tier, and this means that she starts on the back foot. Because of this, she's at C tier. Sims. Sims plays a lot like Mahan, but is much the same as far as playstyle, with primary gameplay differences being the option to carry 10.5km torpedoes. She has slightly less health than Mahan, and she runs into similar issues with concealment. 
Sims almost gets bumped into D tier because Mahan is a better option in almost all areas, having an extra turret, an extra torpedo launcher and more health. Sims stays in C tier because she has a slightly better surface detection than Mahan. Akatsuki Akatsuki has scary torpedoes, but she's a clunky destroyer to handle and is outclassed by Shiratsuyu. Akatsuki has marginally better health, better torpedo reload and an extra gun and torpedo. But she trades 500 meters concealment and this trade means that she doesn't have an advantage over most destroyers that outgun her. Her average stealth while being a torpedo boat is why she's in C tier. Yudachi Yudachi is in an odd place. She is arguably a better torpedo boat than either Shiratsuyu or Akatsuki, but she doesn't match either with gunnery or Shira with stealth. She does come with two quad launchers with 15km torpedoes, smoke and torpedo reload booster with a respectable 6.1km stealth. She doesn't have the stealth to match Shira, and for the torpedo boats that is their primary armament, thus she's at C tier. Mars. Mars is a good destroyer with great health and 8.5km torps, good guns, smoke and hydro. However, she is let down in one major regard, stealth. Mars has a horrible stealth at 6.7km with full concealment. Skilled captains will be able to outplay Mars's horrible stealth, sluggish handling and stay out of her reach. Mars can be made to work, but there are many destroyers that don't have hydro that will easily be able to outplay her and that's why she's in C tier. Minsk Minsk is a good mid-range gunboat. In a game centered around cap control, Minsk isn't a priority pick. She has respectable health, amazing speed, and reliable guns, but has bad stealth and not enough tools to keep her flexible, unlike Mars. Her 4km torpedoes are scary, but only at ranges where all torpedoes are scary. While she does have access to smoke, it's not enough, and primarily due to stealth, she's in C tier. Leningrad Leningrad makes up for many of Minsk's shortfalls with longer range torpedoes and improved stealth. Sadly, she still has bad stealth for a destroyer, matching Sims, and for this reason still starts at a disadvantage to the better destroyers at tier 7. Leningrad, while marginally better than Minsk, is still an average destroyer when it comes to caps, and thus is C tier. Bliskawicker Bliskawicka is a respectable destroyer, with good guns, torps and health, but runs into the same issue that many in C tier do. Stealth. Bliskawicka performs fairly similar to Leningrad and for the same reasons is C tier. Skane. I'll be honest, I don't really enjoy playing Skane. I find her torpedo damage to be too low. However, Skane isn't a bad destroyer, with decent guns, ultra fast long range torpedoes and access to a minor heal. However, with a detection of 6.2km and no smoke, a player who does well in Skane could do better in many other destroyers thanks to better utility or stealth. And because of this, Skane is in C tier. Finally, to D tier, or don't consider. Indianapolis. Indianapolis is a cruiser that I really wanted to be a dark horse, but she just couldn't get there. Indianapolis has a nice 10km radar and respectable 203mm US guns. She even has workable stealth. In one regard, she is completely outclassed, squishiness. Indianapolis can get deleted from any angle and has a big citadel to make it happen. Where other squishy options like Fiji have smoke, or Atlanta has DPM and high gun arcs, Indy doesn't have enough redeeming qualities to warrant consideration, even for her radar. Duca Degli Abrazi. Abrazi is a ship with great consumable options, but her guns stink. Her HE needs IFHE to be effective, and even then doesn't have very good alpha. She is squishy, like Indy, and gets deleted from many angles, but where Indy has respectable guns and radar, Abrazi has a heal. But it's still not enough, I simply can't recommend considering Abrazi. She's even worse than Indy, at least Indy has radar. Vaquilin. While Vaquilin has good guns, speed, and even respectable health and torpedoes, she's very much punished by the game mode. She has bad stealth and bad agility with none of the utility to compensate. I have no doubt some players can and will make her work, but I wouldn't recommend even considering her, as if you can make Vaquilin work, you could surely do better with just about any other destroyer. And that wraps up this very long video, folks. I hope you found it enjoyable, or if not, at least helpful. 
What are your non-S tier picks for ranked? Let me know in the comments section down below. Stay sane, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.